What's up everyone? I'm Leon and uh, in most card games I'm known for brewing up storm lists. So when I saw this ruler that reduces the cost of all of my non-resonator spells by one color list, um, I knew what I had to do and I built this combo deck focused around the Tau Demon as well as Cycle of Faith that can fairly consistently kill your opponent on turn 3 or turn 2 if you have a really really good hand. So let's go ahead and take a look at how that works. Alright, so our ruler is Misato and the only really relevant text here is that all our non resonating spells cost one less, that's kind of why the deck works. But also, um, it's pretty easy to get legend counters with her, because if we play three spell cards in a turn, we get uh, legend counters, and in this deck, as you'll see, that's super easy to accomplish, a lot of zero mana spells, so yeah. Um, her last ability, taking an extra turn, it's super cool that you have that, but I've genuinely never done it, so I don't know. But if you do it, let me know. Uh, but it's never come up for me. Anyway, uh, let's get started. Um, so, the main combo of the deck, right, is this Tau Demon that whenever you discard a card, your opponent takes 300 damage for each of those cards. And we're gonna try and discard a bunch of cards with Cycle of Fate, which discards our entire hand and then uh, draws us that many cards plus one, right? And with Misato, that only costs us one mana, right? Because it's a non resonator spell. Um, to get these into play, right, because we want to get, like, two Tau Demons into play on our combo turn, we have Hidden Empire's Call. So, Hidden Empire's Call searches up a Tau Resonator, and then all Tau Resonators in your hand, with the same name as that Resonator, are going to cost one red less. And the Tau Demon has the ability that if you have a Tau Edition on the field, he's going to cost one colorless less. So essentially, this is going to search you up a Tau Demon and then make all the Tau Demons in your hand cost zero. So it's a very, very essential piece for your combo. So usually, how it's going to look is that you're going to play all your card advantage, your filtering, etc. You're going to have a Tau Demon in your hand by turn three. You're going to play a Hidden Empire's Call, get a second Demon, and then you will play both the demons, or even three, or um, use your legend to get the third demon, but you'll always get two to three demons on turn three. And then with the remaining two mana, you're gonna try to loop two cycle of fates into each other. And with two demons, that's very exactly enough to kill your opponent. With three demons, it's completely overkill, like, you can sometimes kill with one cycle if you have three demons. Um, and then, lastly for like, Tau cards, uh, we just have one Tau of Owl's Allure. You're never gonna cast this card, uh, we just want it for the graveyard effect, because what you have to understand is that after you cast your first cycle, right, it's gonna be completely random what the cards in your hand are, so it's good to have as much control as possible of finding the next cycle to keep the chain going. So if you discard a Tau of Owl's Allure, you can check your top three in case there's a Search for Eternity or a, another cycle of fate in those top three. So this just helps uh, ensure combo consistency. You're never gonna use it for the effect of discarding the demons. You want your demons. Um, yeah. That's like the little Tau package that makes the deck work. Let's start with the Fabled package, which is like, I think my favorite engine in the game. So, starts off with three Exile of the Fallen. Why is this a Fabled package, this is Exile? Well, we have three Forsaken Maiden, which currently is probably my favorite card in the game. Uh, it just searches you any Fabled, uh, any fabled card to your hand. And uh, yeah, that's the only thing we're gonna find off Exile. You're gonna see we have a lot of zero mana tutors uh, to thin the deck, to increase consistency, and also to get um, legend counters on Misato uh, very quickly because the legend we're gonna get is pretty crucial to the combo turn. So yeah, Forsaken Maiden is like insane in this deck, uh, you're gonna see. So also we run Search for Eternity. Nice little trick you can do if you need to up your spell count one more for the Misato counter is get Forsaken Maiden, 
and with her get search first, because search uh, isn't limited to once per turn, so even if you have multiple searches, no worries. And then get the card off the search, so that just adds in one more spell counter to your spell count. Super convenient. Probably the best card in this package um, is accumulated knowledge, right? Brainstorm, but hey guys, in this deck we get to brainstorm for zero, and uh, this is one of the most important parts where all the zero mana tutors that I'm going to be showing you is going to come in because brainstorm's no good without shuffling, right? And like half the cards in this deck shuffle your deck, so brains this is probably the best deck to utilize this brainstorm, especially since it costs zero mana and it's just going to really help you turn through your deck, find the combo pieces by turn three. And then your most generic search target, I'm going to say, is Unbound Enlightenment because in Misato, this is just a zero mana cantrip that can help you fix colors that sometimes comes up. But more importantly, you sacrifice it to gain a legend counter. So basically, this is zero mana, draw a card, gain a legend counter. And that's really, really important because, like I said, uh, getting to three legend counters for our legend on the combo turn is going to make the combo a lot more consistent. And then lastly, for the Fable package, we just have one Void Strike just a versatile piece of removal um, and it costs only one in this deck which is really good so yeah that is it for our colorless package uh, fabled package and then we have a few more uh, search packages just to increase the amount of zero mana searches we can cast to make the brainstorm better so we have three biotech genesis that searches out Gemini S58, and with Gemini S58 we can either get Unbound Enlightenment, like as just a generic target, same as with Forsaken Maiden, this is just like the best generic target to get if you just want to slam that out there, or of course we need Hidden Empire's Call for a combo and Genesis finds that, so yeah, super crucial engine to the deck. Um, and also, as you can tell, we have a lot of like creatures that search stuff, so you have a lot of chump blockers in this deck, so if your opponent is trying to overrun you on the ground, you can often stall them off for a turn or two, which is really big. And then, for the last engine, we have three Peer Into the Infinite, and the only spell that it can search is Natsumi's Trance. So, Trance can actually give you good card advantage, because like I said, we have a lot of random one-cost bodies lying around, so if you just have one of those, boom, Natsumi's Trance, draw two, right? Get rid of that fucker, you don't even need him. But yeah, also helps, like, because most of the searches, except for Search for Eternity, they're once per turn, right? So if you have, like, I don't know, like, two of these, right, and you've used one, you can just, like, use this to discard a search that you can't use anymore in this turn and draw two for it. So Natsumi's Trance is really amazing. And then, for the last two cards in the main deck, just two Maiden of Rebirth, the anti-hand trap hand trap, because we're a linear combo deck, so as you can tell with this much searching, if we get Vengeful, Spirited, uh, GG, like, genuinely, <laughs> it takes our entire turn and it might even just make it impossible for us to combo off. So, yeah, we want to stop uh, hand traps against our linear plan. Alright, uh, moving on to the legend deck, since I've mentioned it a lot, uh, the one crucial legend that we have is Hiromi, which by sacrificing by sacrificing two of the Unbound Enlightenment to get the legend for her, you're gonna be able to get another demon. And very importantly, um, when you have, before you're gonna search your deck, use her ability to put a card from your graveyard on the bottom of your deck. And you're gonna put any Search for Eternities or any Cycle of Fates that you might have, because when you cast your first Cycle of Fate, this is gonna make it more likely that you draw into the next one. And because the Search for the Demon is then gonna shuffle the deck, it's gonna like put them in a random place in your deck. So it's just increasing your odds of cleanly fulfilling your combo turn. Then also as a tutor for any like pieces we might need. We have Ramu. Um, yeah, super simple. If we need a spell, we get Ramu. It's really not that deep. But <laughs> yeah, usually it's Hiromi though. Like I think like 90% of the games we make Hiromi. Um, and then we just have an AG in case we need to answer something that we can't answer. Uh, like <laughs> you saw this, this deck's only piece of interaction is one Void Strike. So 
it's nice to have an AG. For magic stones, it's super simple. Uh, as you saw, we're only green red, so we have the green red stone three times, of course, um, and then we have red white, green white, and one green black. Uh, the reason for white is just sideboard cards. Um, there's nothing in the main board that we need the white for, and the black, yeah, <laughs> it, it exists. I thought the artwork was cool, that's why I picked that one. Um, then for our sideboard, so we have a third Maiden of Rebirth. If we're playing against the Vengeful Spirit deck, crucial, uh, we need this. So, but I think a lot of people aren't just going to be randomly mainboarding three Vengeful Spirits, so that's why I chose to rather have the utility card of Void Strike in the sideboard, but hey, if you have a friend who keeps just jamming Vengeful Spirits against you, put the Void Strike into the side and put the third uh, Maiden into the main. Then um, I have two main 1003 uh, as hand traps. So the thing is this deck doesn't really like to play hand traps because yes, you're one for oneing often, but this deck needs to keep his hand as massive as possible so it discards as many cards as possible to the cycle. So this is a hand trap that just replaces itself and makes your combo bigger, so really nice in certain matchups. Um, and then I have a little uh, light load package, so to uh, Himawari, because of course we're a creature based combo deck, so removal can absolutely ruin our day, so we want two of these. Um, then a Gathering of Allies to search it, right? Another zero mana search as well, and gives us essentially three copies. And then to Light Lord Battlefield against any type of graveyard deck we might encounter. Um, super nice. We can also tutor it off of our Gemini S58. And this is what the white in the stones was for. And yeah, then since we're fabled and all our stuff is reduced by one, it's actually pretty efficient. Uh, one Memento Mori, you don't really need to run multiple because this deck has so much search for fabled cards, like you should be able to find this in every hand that you have if you really need it. Uh, the second Void Strike, maybe we need more creature removal. And then Shinra Tensei, yeah, um, if your opponent is running Kylo, fuck them, and, uh, but this deck has probably the most access to Shinra Tensei of any uh, deck in the game, you have so much search for it, right, so running one is easily enough. Um, Mono no Aware uh, against linear decks, very very powerful and it only costs one in this deck, so this can absolutely destroy an opponent. Uh, yeah, that's relying on one linear game plan. And then for our quantum search spell, I have one quantum barrier. It's the same purpose as Himawari, just protect your combo piece in the turn you're gonna go off. And lastly we have Dante, uh, in case there's any um, any additions we might have an issue with. And then there's Kialo, which you might think, wait, if you board out Misato, this deck doesn't work. But it's actually deceptive because Kialo can discard your entire hand for free, right? So you only need one cycle of fate with Kialo. So essentially, your cycle of fate costs, uh, costs two, but you're getting two cycle of fates for the price of one with Kialo. So you get to disrupt an opponent and still do your full combo. So yeah, uh, this deck actually really, really nicely slots Kialo in. And yeah, that's it for the deck. Um, if you enjoy like Storm and Magic or Storm and any card game, if you enjoy linear combo decks, this deck is for you. But it, if, you're, if you're a Yu-Gi-Oh player, I think you'll like it because you're just solitaring, like your opponent isn't doing anything. You're playing there for 10 minutes and then you win. Uh, super fun for your opponent, for sure. Um, but yeah, I recommend it. I love this day.